Good morning, everyone. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day to join us for uh, the, the Sage uh, e e-commerce uh, web, uh, webinar brought to us by uh, e-commerce uh, e or commerce build, sorry, uh, for Sage 300 and Sage X3. Uh, just a little housekeeping uh, before we get started. Um, just want to make sure everybody can see our screen. Uh, if not, please uh, just type in the comment section. And speaking of the comment section, if everybody could uh, put all their questions in there and we will get them answered at the end of the webinar. Um, and we'd like to thank at this time uh, uh, Stephen Midgley, he's a COO of uh, Commerce Build. He'll be joining us and presenting this e-commerce webinar for the Sage 300 and Sage X3. Uh, so Commerce Build uh, helps you unlock the power of your Sage ERP system to deliver a complete end-to-end e-commerce -end e digital experience for your customers. So at this time, Stephen, I'll, I'll let you take it over. Great. Thanks, Sean, and uh, thanks to everyone for uh, taking time out of your day. I know uh, days get busy, so uh, spending the next 45 minutes or so with me, um, do appreciate that. And as uh, Sean said, uh, we'll make time for questions at the end. Uh, and at the end of the uh, session, we'll have the contact info for IWI Consulting Group as well as for myself. So. If there are follow-up questions, I'd be happy to uh, answer any of those after the session. As Sean mentioned, my name is Stephen Midgley. I'm the Chief Operating Officer for Commerce Build. Uh, some of you may know Commerce Build as XM Development slash Sage Ecommerce. About a year ago, we rebranded, um, uh, partly because we felt Commerce Build was a more apt description of what we do uh, and uh, how we help, as Sean, Sean said, how we help unlock the power of your Sage ERP system and extend that to the digital world. So on this session, uh, we're going to cover a few things. We're, we're going to talk more general generalities in the beginning and talk a little bit about the rise of B2B e-commerce. And often when we think of e-commerce, we think of B2C, a business to consumer. And that's really because every day we, we're interacting with technology. Uh, for those who uh, take transit, you'll see that everyone's on a phone and have their heads buried in their phone. Uh, most of you this past holiday season would have transacted online to buy certain gifts, uh, and it's just an easy way to um, to do business. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit a little bit how that B two C a business to consumer is really impacting business to business or B two B e commerce, and, and why you need to pay attention to these digital trends because they will impact your business, if not today, certainly in the coming months. We'll talk a little bit about the Commerce Build uh, Solutions portfolio and a little bit about Commerce Build itself. Uh, we'll dive into some customer success uh, and then we'll explain to you how you can have a fully integrated B2B e-commerce solution in 60 days. And I'll, I'll walk through those steps uh, of our onboarding uh, process. So first, wh why, why does business to business e-commerce matter? Um, you know, why is it changing how you should think about how about your business and, and and more importantly how is it changing what your customers and prospects are thinking about how business should be done so by 2023 we expect the north american uh, b2b e-commerce market to be worth 1.8 trillion so twice the size of the north american b2c e-commerce market and it will account by 2023 account for 17 percent of all b2b sales so basically one of five transactions will be done online and so as i mentioned at the top uh often we think of e-commerce as being business to consumer but the reality is is the, the real growth um the real trajectory is with uh, business to business or, or, or b2b so we're seeing this, this sort of dawn of a new reality and, and we'll we'll get into that but first, what's, what's driving this growth? What's driving this rapid adoption of B2B e-commerce? First, 80% of companies believe customer expectations have changed due to B2C practices. So 80% of businesses understand that there's a changing paradigm in terms of how their customers expect to engage with them. Now, they're not expecting all transactions to be done online, but they're expecting to be able to transact business with you online and a common term you'll hear is omni-channel an omni-channel basically refers to that as a customer i expect to be able to interact with you 
at the same level of service regardless of channel, whether that be a call center, whether that be walking into the office or a retail outlet, or whether that be online. And so your aspiration is to be able to provide an omni-channel experience regardless of channel, be able to provide the same level of customer service um, uh, for all of your customers. 46% of B2B companies expect more than half of their customers will be buying online by 2021. So nearly half half of, of uh, North American mid-sized businesses surveyed by Forrester are saying that they expect half or more of their customers to be buying online. And so 2021 isn't really that far away. It's about 10 months away. And so the question for all of you on this session is, what are you doing to, to, to get ready? What are you doing uh, in terms of preparation to be able to service those customers? And 42% of B2B companies experience increased average order value and co conversion rates online. And this is an interesting uh, byproduct of, of e-commerce. Um, things like people who bought X also bought Y, uh, being able to sell related items. And I'm sure everyone on this webinar has, has transacted online. So uh, maybe you've gone to Chapters uh, and uh, you bought some books or you've gone to Amazon. And when you go there, you'll see that people who, who, who looked at this product, let's uh, use chapters, people look at, at this book, also looked at these books or bought these books. So, so very often when you go to buy something online, you end up buying more than one product. You end up buying more than you expected, uh, partly because there's no exchange of cash, so it's just a click. Uh, but the reality is, is it's an effective way of increasing that average order value. And there are really interesting tips and techniques that can be implemented in the Commerce Build platform to help address those, to allow you to uh, buy related items, uh, allow you to really control the experience uh, and being able to maybe push excess stock that you have, uh, bundling uh, solutions, uh, products. Uh, and so uh, B2B e-commerce allows uh, companies to, to drive a better experience, but also drive that increased um, average order value. And what we see is 38% completed half or more of the total sales online in 2018. So we're seeing this adoption of technology. And one of the driving factors is more of a demographic factor uh, is this sort of millennial uh, age group. Um, and millennials were born between 1980 and 1997. And millenn millennials, if you look about 19, even 1980, that's someone who's now 40 or turning 40 this year. And so these people are mainly in their late 20s, in their 30s, and they're moving into powers of influence and decision making, and they've grown up with technology. When you think about millennials, they have no idea that they had to get up and change, get up, actually physically get up and change the channel on the TV. Uh, they have really no recollection of, or, or very little recollection of things like VCRs. Uh, they've grown up in a technology-centric society. They communicate through technology. Uh, they use tools like Slack, uh, and so they have a high propensity towards technology. It's an extension of who, who they are and self-identity, and they expect to be able to do that kind of uh, transacting, uh, uh, whether it's B2C or B2B. And so as this millennial group move more into the decision-making and into uh, positions of influence, uh, e-commerce, uh, or online transacting will just be a standard way of conducting business and more importantly will be an expected way of doing business. So what we see e-commerce as is it's really a disruptive technology. Now everyone knows what e-commerce is, everyone's using it, but it's 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 an interesting concept. It's a highly topical technology. And what we're seeing is this, this, this sort of disruption in, in, in supply chains and this disruption of how we engage. And it's changing how businesses interact with customers, partners, and employees. And more importantly, it's changing how they want to interact with you and their expectation levels of how they uh, will interact or want to interact. And so what we're seeing is this digital transformation and the key word here isn't digital, but transformation. And in our history, there have been examples of transformative technologies. And we can go all the way back to uh, the printing press, uh, Johann Gutenberg's printing press, um, uh, the, the Model T Ford, um, the plane. Uh, there are lots of examples of transformative technology. Maybe more recently, um, 
uh, digital photography, which basically ended Kodak's dominance in that space. And so we're seeing this, these transformations happening and how digital is impacting all aspects of our business, all verticals, and really no industry, no vertical uh, is, is, will be left untouched um, by digital. And so the question is, is how do you embrace technology to um, provide greater, uh, greater value to your customers, to attract new business, uh, to improve operating efficiencies, and also how to uh, drive incremental revenue. So there is this mind shift happening in terms of, of how uh, uh, business are, businesses are engaging with their customers. And so what we see is the dawn of a new digital reality. We're seeing this consumerization of your customers. And it's already happened as B2C is driving digital behavior and expectations in the B2B marketplace. And certainly at, at Commerce Build, uh, it's constantly evolving. <clears throat> companies like Amazon uh, sort of set the bar in terms of user experience. And so many of our clients are looking for that same type of user experience, that same type of uh, technology that they can leverage. But also because of technology, it's, it's, it really evens the playing field. And so whether you're a small company or a big company, is sort of irrelevant when it comes to technology. And technology can equip small organizations and make them more effective. As long as you're nimble and agile in how you go to business, uh, technology allows you to grow quickly and allows you to compete with bigger players. Your customers, because of uh, uh, digital, they're more informed than ever before. And often they know what they want before they engage. And think about 20, 25 years ago, you went to buy a car, you would walk onto the lot really not knowing much about the car you wanted, except that um, maybe you did some research in magazines. Uh, but today, when you walk on that lot, you know exactly what you want. I mean, you can go onto any of uh, car manufacturer websites and basically pre-build your car. And so, there's a bit, because of the technology, there's been a transfer of power in terms of knowledge, a transfer of knowledge from the business to the consumer. And that really has, has changed how they how they engage. And equally, your customers have high expectations on usability uh, and, and user design, and they're very much influenced by social. Um, now, marketing historically has been one where everyone thinks they can do marketing and it's a very subjective field, but because all individuals have phones, uh, access to the internet on a daily basis, uh, they, have, they have high expectations on what is a good, good design and what isn't a good design. And if your website's hard to navigate or hard to do business on, uh, likely they're going to go somewhere else because one thing about technology, it's created a high degree of impatience uh, among society. So B2B e-commerce is reaching, and I would argue has reached, critical mass in terms of adoption and in terms of criticality and in terms of uh, necessity as part of your overall uh, go-to-market strategy. And why is that? Well, probably... Uh, mobility is changing interaction. So the ubiquity of mobility is really today's reality. So the majority of B2B is shifting from offline to online. You've got the mobility of employees, partners, and customers. And even for you, maybe some of your staff can work from home because of technology. They have that flexibility. And what we're seeing is things like responsive design is a must-have. So if you're not sure if your current site is responsive design, basically go to a, a, an iPad or an iPhone Type in your URL and see how it renders. If it renders poorly, um, it's, it, it uh, doesn't scale to the device size, L likely your site is uh, outdated uh, and you need to uh, look at creating a responsive design site that will scale to any device. Um, responsive helps with search engine optimization rankings. Uh, Google, for example, uh, ranks responsive design sites far higher than non-responsive design sites. And when it comes to search engine optimization, Google is really where it matters. Um, there's other sites, other search engines like Bing, but they really <clears throat> aren't as important a a as Google. And why mobility is important is we're seeing a high adoption of, of people using their iPhones, or iPads, smartphones, for uh, doing transactions. So in fact, 68% of North Americans are using uh, an, an ultra portable device like an iPad or an iPhone uh, at least monthly to do transactions. And then we're seeing at Commerce Build with our clients, more and more of our, of our clients' customers using mobile devices um, 
uh, to access uh, the site to do business. And for that reason, all of our templates are responsive design. And this digital shift is changing because buyers are demanding. 94% want to know where and how to make a decision. And that's really interesting because what we see with technology is people have the, 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 the degree of impatience has risen. I, I often say because of technology, we all have adult onset ADHD. We can't focus for very long. We keep moving around. Uh, and so much information, even if you watch the news on television, uh, often there's a banner at the bottom scrolling, the stuff on the side. We're just hit with information all the time. And so you need to carve through that that sort of clutter and be able to make it extremely easy for your customers to, to buy online. At 49%, if they can't do it, we'll go somewhere else. And what we see is, is customers are very fickle. Um, they will not tolerate um, poorly designed sites. And so when looking at your website, looking at e-commerce, you, you need to look at your site as what is the primary objective of your site? Is the primary objective of your site to, to, to transact uh, uh, for your customers to come log in uh, and make purchases? If so, then you need to cut through the marketing uh, jargon and get right to basics, and that is allow them to easily uh, come to your website and uh, complete their purchase. So we talked a little bit about B2C and how B2C is driving change. and, and and while B2B certainly is where the revenue is at, uh, B2C is, is, the, is the tip of the spear. So B2B is the revenue, that's the future of e-commerce, but the technology, we'll call it the sandbox, if you will, is on the B2C side. And so from a B2B perspective, we're often looking at what's happening in the B2C world and how do we leverage that? How do we adopt that uh, on the B2B side? Because we know that if not today, very shortly, what's happening in B2C will influence what's happening in B2B. And as I mentioned, consumers, are, we're all consumers of technology and may expect the same experience in our B2B transactions that we get with our B2C transactions. And a great example is Amazon. Amazon is really, Amazon is really, this, is really this agent of change when it comes to how e-commerce and more broadly how technology is impacting how we interact. This is known as the Amazon effect. And we think of Amazon Amazon uh, basically began as a as a business that started as an online bookseller back in 1994, <clears throat> and today they're impacting nearly every aspect of our daily lives and our use of technology. So, take for example, grocery stores. Back in uh, back in 2018, or sorry, in 2017, Amazon acquired Whole Foods. And in 2018, they launched Amazon Go, whereby you select your groceries and simply walk out of the store. Uh, so they've been testing this where you walk in, you pick, you pack all your groceries, and then you walk out. There's a body scanner, and there's no need to line up to check out. There's no need uh, to do the self-service, which sometimes becomes a, uh, uh, a bit of a disaster. Um, and so they're trying these new concepts. But what's interesting is they're changing the experience of how people grocery shop. Now, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing is up for discussion, but that's that's what they're doing. And so you can now walk out of the store and with all your groceries, never having to line up to, to do the checkout. And so Amazon is changing, <clears throat> is changing the experience of how people grocery shop and they're changing the overall expectation of how technology should be utilized. And that will eventually impact uh, B2B. So a quick a quick second here, if we look at shareholder value in the last seven years, well, actually from 2011 to 2018, um, which company generated the most shareholder value? Uh, and the answer is, is uh, Netflix. Um, so the question is, which company generated the second most uh, return on shareholder value? A and the answer is Domino's. And, and I can tell you, having shown the slide at a number of sessions, uh, nobody gets the answer. Netflix, Amazon, Apple, Google, those are common uh, responses. But Domino's is is the second fastest growing company in terms of shareholder value. And I bring this up because it's another example of how technology is changing uh, business. Domino's doesn't describe themselves as a food services or a pizza company. They describe themselves as a technology company. And more than 60% of Domino's orders are now executed on digital platforms rather than by phone. 
yet they continue to expand their outlets. So they offer a true omni-channel experience. You can walk into an outlet and order your pizza, or you can do it from home. And talking about interconnected technology, customers can order on Domino's on, on the smartphone app, which is fairly straightforward these days, but they can also use Amazon's Echo speaker or online via Facebook. So for example, if you're making a dinner and you burn the tuna casserole, uh, you can talk to um, Amazon Echo and order two large pepperoni pizzas and it will connect to the, relay that to the closest dominoes and those pizzas will be, will be pulled together, will be made and delivered. They have an order tracker so you can see how your pizza is being made and the status of your pizza. And we're seeing that that kind of trend is really changing um, the use of technology. Uber is another good example. Now I'm based in Vancouver and last month Vancouver entered, uh, entered the 21st century and we have Uber finally, uh, the last city in North America not to have Uber. Um, but Uber has transformed the, the industry in terms of how we commute. Um, Taxis still exist, but Uber has changed the paradigm in terms of uh, the experience. And this is a way of saying how technology is using, uh, how we're using technology or, uh, to, to change our experiences. Uh, this is a, a, a actual photo in the UK. Domino's is experienced with drone delivery. Um, having someone, uh, I grew up in the UK and I can tell you it rains a lot, so I'm not sure how that works because that doesn't look like a waterproof pizza delivery bag. But the point is Domino's is looking at different ways to leverage technology to grow their business, to improve customer experience, and, and to improve operations. And that's really what you should be looking at. When you're looking at e-commerce, those are the three factors you have to consider. One, how is it going to drive incremental revenue? Two, how's it going to improve my uh, operating efficiencies? And three, how's it going to improve the customer experience? You have to be able to answer all three questions when you're looking at e-commerce. If you have an e-commerce solution that is not connected to your Stage 300X3 system, you will not be able to realize operating efficiencies. If you have an e-commerce solution whereby your em employees are having to uh, manually enter orders from your web, it isn't an e-commerce solution. And so, you have to look at those three aspects when you're looking at technology, uh, drive incremental revenue, improve operating processes, and improve the customer experience. Those are the three factors that you need to be looking at in order to uh, make the right decision when it comes to e-commerce. Because the question of whether you need e-commerce or not is not the question. The answer is you need e-commerce. Um, I guarantee everyone on this call uh, re re requires some form of e-commerce uh, as a means to future growth and to protect, protect your install base. The, the, the question really is, is what type of e-commerce solution do I need and what are my business drivers and how is it gonna make my, my uh, uh, operations more effective? And really what we see is, is, is e-commerce more, is more than just a shopping cart. So we talked about Amazon and Domino's and all these B2C examples that we're all really familiar with. And when we think Amazon, we think shopping cart. I mean, you, you go in and, and, and B2C is very, very simple e-commerce. It's the same price for everyone. It's not complex. Um, sure, there's lots of bells and whistles and really cool technology, but B2C is very simplistic. It is basically the same price for everyone. Uh, when we do talk about B2B, it, it, there's a lot there's a, a lot more layers of complexity. Uh, maybe you sell sell wire and you you sell by unit of measure. Um, maybe you have tiered pricing, so not each person, not each of your customers is equal. So when they log in, there's a there's a unique user experience. They get special pricing, special discounting. Maybe they only see certain products. So there's a lot more factors that go into B2B e-commerce. But most importantly. When we think e-commerce, do not think the shopping cart. That is not what e-commerce is really about. E-commerce is all about the experience. And that experience becomes more important than what you are selling. May seem kind of odd, but that experience of what you deliver becomes more important than what you're selling because what you are selling is products. What you're delivering is experience. If you deliver a quality experience to your customers, they're going to come back. Uh, they're not gonna go somewhere else. And so you need to make sure that the, the, the ease of use is of paramount importance in, in being able to service your customers. Maybe you have customers that come um, and place the same order every week or every month. Well, why would you have them log in and then go search for the products? Why not provide them with a quick order template where all the orders are all, pre all the required 
products that they order are all preset. They go in, hit submit, boom, it's done. They're in for two minutes. Um, and often in B2B, they're not there to browse and look around. They're there to go transact, push the order through, and then and then leave. And so it's all about making it as easy as possible. So those are the things you need to consider when looking at B2B e-commerce is how do I make this as easy as possible for my customers to A, adopt, and B, use. And that experience is only achieved through integration. And so an integration is not middleware. It is how how do I integrate my front end, my website, uh, with my back end, my ERP system. And at the end of the day, you're here because you you uh, have Sage as your ERP system. And Sage is really the backbone of your organization. And when you're looking at technologies, you need to have them stack on, on your Sage system. So the first question you have to ask is, how does this integrate with my Sage uh, ERP system? That is the most important question. Because without integration, you cannot deliver that experience uh, of that seamless uh, experience of integrating um, your front end with your back end. And so um, what we do see is that the, the, the web is really the, the sort of foundation of your go-to-market strategy, whether you do outbound campaigns or you do uh, phone calls or you have sessions, everyone's going to come back to the website for more information. And so the web is your foundation. Um, you need to make it very easy to use. You need to make it easy for them to transact. And the way you do that is is by is through integration. So, for example, if you have customers who have, um, you know, tiered pricing, you know, gold, silver, bronze, that's all built in Sage. And so the question for you is, how do you get that logic that you spent so much time and effort built into Sage? How do you extend that to the digital world? How do you deliver that efficiency that you've you've built into Sage and deliver that uh, into uh, onto the digital world, digital platform to give your customers that, that experience that they're expecting. So what, what's driving this need for ERP integration? And this is data from Forrester of the North American survey. 85% um, believe that the the ERP is important to the customer experience. So 85% of companies surveyed believe ERP is important to the customer experience. They realize that because of all that business logic that's kind of trapped in this ERP system that they've that they've built. And I've, you've all gone through ERP implementations. It can be a very daunting task. And so it's all in there. And so the question is, how do you get that information out of, of your Sage system and out into your other applications? It's about unlocking that business logic because that business logic will deliver that superior experience. 60% <clears throat> believe integration with the back office is a key initiative for, in 2020, 60% of companies surveyed in North America believe that e-commerce inter e integration with the back office is a key initiative. And again, it's about extending that logic to the digital world and delivering a superior customer experience. <clears throat> and 40% of BDB buyers want more integration. Now, they may not understand what that integration means, but you, you, you always have to look at this from a client perspective. I come to the website to transact. How do I know that my transaction's gone through? Um, when I see stock information, um, how do I know that that's an accurate reflection of what's available? And so bad customer experience is I go online, I make a transaction with you. The next day I get a phone call saying, oh, I'm sorry, we're out of stock. Um, that's a poor user experience. And so B2B buyers know that integration with the ERP system leads to a better overall uh, experience and a more accurate experience as well. So what's critical for your integrated B2B e-commerce solution? One, and most importantly, is that replication of your Sage business logic. You need to be able to extend that logic to the digital world. And that could only be done through uh, through a tightly integrated system. You need to have easy to navigate product catalogs, so making it easy uh, to, to look. Um, so organizing what we'll call an information architecture, IA, uh, being able to uh, logically organizing or intuitively organizing your product catalog so it's easy to search. <clears throat> Access to real-time information, so stock price, prices, stock availability, being able to access that in real time is critical. Being able to offer complex pricing that's personalized to the individual and simplified for them. 
and being able to provide 24 seven client focus. The other aspect of, of usability is the on-site search. Now, if you were to look at your, if you, if you have on-site search today, I can pretty much guarantee that the two most common sections of your website in terms of user uh, behavior and, and visits will be the on-site search and uh, the product section. On-site search is critical um, from a user because people don't have time to, to, to surf your site. They have, they may have, uh, likely have uh, an intent to purchase a specific product. Uh, and so they need to be able to find it very quickly. Uh, and so on-site search becomes an, a critically important element of your uh, e-commerce offering. So we talked a little bit about the, the landscape trends, how B2C is, transact, is transforming and driving B2B change. Uh, we talked a little bit about um, the criticality of integration uh, and the um, the need to be able to replicate that Sage business logic because that Sage is that single version of the truth. It's a foundation for your business. And how do you unlock the business logic um, and extend that to the digital world? So let's take a minute, talk a little bit about Commerce Build and the solutions portfolio. So Commerce Build intelligently replicates the complex business data built into your Sage ERP system. And that business data is complex. Uh, many of you have complex models. Um, we work with clients around the world uh, dealing with some extremely complex systems in terms of how uh, they go to market and, and pricing structures. And so we take that complex uh, uh, business data and help design it and extend it uh, to the digital world. Uh, Commerce Build is the only e-commerce solution certified by Sage. And we enable you to deliver a complete end-to-end -end digital experience for your customers that allows you to maximize your stage investment. What you don't want to do is go spend money on a system that connects to another system that connects to another system to the web. Um, you want to avoid middleware solutions because they can be clunky, they can be expensive, and they don't often provide that depth of integration. Um, when we're looking at e-commerce, th the most important aspect is is that integration because if i come to your site accuracy becomes part of the ex that experience it can look really good the site can look great <clears throat> but if i'm not able to transact effectively if i'm not able to search easily if i'm not able to get access to accurate information then uh you're really uh, not going to be able to provide a, a superior uh, customer experience for your customers and so really Commerce Build is an e-commerce solution that goes beyond the simple integration uh, by replicating all that sort of deep business logic that you've designed in your Sage system. The, the platform itself, it's a software as a service platform. Um, it's hosted in Google Cloud. Uh, we transact over a billion dollars annually. <clears throat> we have over a million unique users and over a million SKUs on the platform. We have customers that generate uh, as little as $100,000 a year in the platform and, and customers that generate hundreds of thousands of dollars on the platform, uh, sorry, hundreds of millions of dollars uh, per year on the platform. So the platform is very scalable in terms of size, in terms of flexibility, and, and in terms of, uh, of offering. Uh, we also integrate with a number of third-party uh, applications. Uh, so uh, really, when we think about e-commerce, we think about technology, we think about integrated uh, or um, connected uh, environment. So we connect with a number of different um, uh, applications, whether those be carriers, payment gateways, uh, marketing tools, uh, social media tools, to allow you to effectively extend your business online. So we'll look at the solutions portfolio. Um, Commerce Build is, is both a B2B and B2C uh, offering. We, we have, um, uh, uh, most of our customers, about 80% of our customers are B2B, uh, and, and the rest are uh, B2B and B2C. So maybe they offer the ability to transact online for uh, what we'll call guests, uh, or, or business to consumer. Um, but the majority of our customers are B2B, and certainly, as I mentioned earlier in the session, B2B is far more complex uh, than 
uh, than B2C. Um, so our commerce build B2B solution, it's highly scalable, it's a performance-based solution. It replicates all that customer-specific pricing logic built into your Sage ERP system. So for example, you may have uh, um, uh, tailored pricing at the individual level, or at the company level, um, so when they log in, uh, they get that specific pricing. Uh, for example, you may have uh, platinum type customers that when they log in, you want to provide them with a unique look and feel. So when they log into the system, uh, log into Commerce Build, uh, the, the, the look and feel is, is unique to them. We certainly have some clients who offer that to the tier one, tier one customers. So Commerce Build provides accurate real-time inventory reporting for your Sage ERP system. All, all new orders are automatically posted to your Sage uh, system for processing. So when you make a price change in in your Sage 300x3 system, that's automatically reflected on the Sage, uh, so on the Commerce Build platform. When an order is processed uh, online, it flows directly into your Sage system. There is no intervention. There's no manual intervention. There's no need for any of your staff to take that order from the web and then process or enter it into uh, Sage 300. Now, you can in Sage create workflows to uh, verify orders before they get processed, um, but orders go directly into um, Sage uh, 300. And, and because it's a SaaS or software as a service solution. It's in the cloud. There's no need to do any installation on your end. No servers are required. And if you have a power outage, for example, the Commerceville platform is still is still functioning, it's still taking orders. And when that weak that connection is is made between um, uh, between Commerce Build and your Sage system, when it's reconnected, all those orders will just flow through into your Sage system. So a, a power outage, for example, uh, doesn't impact your revenue. It's a, it's a powerful feature-rich platform. There's over 200 components that allow you to scale your business from things like quick order to custom fields for X3, uh, being able to um, handle unit of measure, uh, being able to uh, deal with the complexities of B2C, uh, sorry, B2B. Um, as I mentioned, it integrates with dozens of third-party solutions, and it's SEO-centric, so it allows you to use, um, optimize the site for increasing your search rankings from a search engine optimization perspective. Our B2C solutions, same platform and uh, uh, same um, uh, pricing model. Uh, you can have B2B and B2C, depends on your entirely business system. Very much the same type of structure, that real-time integration with your Sage ERP system. All new orders flow in. You get real-time view of all your customer orders. And what's interesting about Commerce Build is because it's connected to your Sage system, um, you, you get view of all of your um, all of your orders um, across the platform, as opposed to just not just online, but also through uh, if you have a call center, if you have a, a telephone, all orders at the at the customer level are shown. Number of secure payment gateway options. Most of our B2B customers would use on account often net 30-day terms. Obviously, that doesn't work for B2C. Um, so we integrate with a number of uh, payment gateways, such as PayPal, PayFlow Pro, uh, Bamboro, uh, Braintree. Um, and so pretty much, certainly in North America, all the major uh, gateways we work with, as well as uh, shipping carriers. We also offer a sales portal, and that's really personalized anywhere, any, anywhere access, um, anytime access to your sales team. So many of you will have sales reps or on the go, they're remote, they're, they're traveling to meet with clients. So really what it is, it's a subset of, it's a subset of, of um, the Commerce Bull platform. So it's a stripped down piece where um, a sales rep can go in, they can log in and see uh, uh, customers' transaction behavior, you know, what orders have, have they been placing, Across all channels, um, they're able to assume their customer and place sales orders on behalf of their customers. Tightly integrated with Sage ERP, so it's always providing accurate information to the sales rep. Sales rep can view real-time order status and account details. Uh, they can manage back orders and order templates. <coughs> Excuse me. And so what the sales portal does, it really increases the productivity of your sales and services teams with real-time access to customer account information, allows them to assume that identity, allows them to be more effective 
in their relationships with the uh, customers. And equally, we have a, a customer portal, which on the flip side is online real-time self-servicing for customers. And again, it's a stripped down version of our B2B solution that's specific for customers, allows them to, and, and as with all commerce build solutions, it's fully integrated with the Sage ERP system, but it gives customers access to real-time account details, including invoice status, payment and credit status, the ability to access and print original Sage ERP documents, pay invoices online, view all Sage orders with line detail, uh, and what it does, much like with the sales portal for, for your sales reps, the customer portal for your customers gives them complete control and a consolidated view of all their transactions, regardless of sales channel. So they can go anytime, pay, check out their credit status, pay invoices, pay, make payments, uh, access their Sage ERP documents, or, or documents that are generated by your Sage system. So it gives them a a, a degree of control. We do have customers that um, go with the sales portal and expand to a larger B2B solution as their business grows. And then for Sage 300, we have uh, what we call Commerce Bill Payments, and that's the secure and reliable credit card payment processing. Um, so for accounting departments, Otis syncs with Sage 300 day end processing. You can create receipt batches and write receipts, uh, be able to pay invoices using a credit card. Uh, issue refunds and credit notes, generate settlement reports. So it allows you, and if you you have to be using Sage 300, it allows you to provide your customers with a faster, more f efficient payment processing while reducing overhead costs. So here's a standard uh, 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 page, product page um, for uh, uh, the Commerce Bill platform. This information that you see here, the product name, uh, the SKU number, the vendor part number, the multifunction, which is a one-line marketing copy, and the price, and if there's stock on hand, all of that comes from your Sage system. So if, you, if the price is changed in Sage, it changes on this page automatically on the Commerce Bill, Commerce Bill platform. Um, if stock changes, it'll show you a stock availability. Uh, on, on this page as well. The information that's in orange is stuff that's loaded, content that's loaded into the Commerce Bill platform directly. Commerce Bill has a built-in content, ed content editor called uh, CK Editor, a content management system. So you upload your product images. You can have up to 12 images per product page. Um, and also the marketing copy, like description, specifications. Maybe you have a product video. Um, <clears throat> allows you to, to 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 add all that to the page to add for, for more content and a better user experience. You'll also see on the right side of the screen, you, you might also like, those are related items. So people who bought this also bought that. That can be man, manually controlled within Commerce Build to allow you to cross-sell uh, certain stock, maybe have excess stock of a product, um, but allows you to manually to, to drive that experience. So we'll look at customer success briefly, and I won't go through these slides. You'll get a copy of this presentation so you can read these in more detail. Um, but the common trends for our customers, and we have over 200 worldwide, the common trends for our customers in terms of success is uh, driving inc incremental revenue and improving operating efficiencies and delivering a better uh, customer experience. So batteries expert are out of uh, Quebec. So 85% of the 30,000 wholesale orders are placed online each year. So they do the vast majority of the or orders are done uh, online. Uh, Maddie's is a natural pet products company. They're a Sage 300 customer. Uh, they're based in uh, Delta, British Columbia, so Metro Vancouver. 65% of the orders are placed online within two years of installing their system. So these companies are, are, have adopted e-commerce and what it's done for them is it's it's driven it's it's driven um, more revenue. It's improved their efficiency. So Manny used to do all the orders. They had a, a team that would take orders off the website and place them into Sage 300. That staff are now been redeployed to work on other mission critical initiatives for their business, uh, and it's proved the customer experience. 
And that experience, as I mentioned, is not about a shopping cart. It, the experience is is about that level and depth of integration, um, providing accuracy of information um, to your customers. So as I mentioned, we have customers around the globe um, of all sizes. Uh, uh, Commerce Build works with Sage X3 and Sage 300, fully integrating both platforms and extending them to the digital world. Uh, and just a, a quick looking at, uh, we talked about responsive design and templates, and while the most important aspect of e-commerce is that integration, uh, another important component of e-commerce is that is the luck and feel. For many of our clients, we actually build out their entire web presence. Some of our clients have built a great uh, website and don't want to change it, but what they need to do is they need to um, they need the e-commerce piece. And so we create a, a, a basically a B2B portal for them and to link off the global nav. And so maybe it's, uh, you know, shop.companyname.com subdomain. But these are some examples of the sites that we built using our templates. And it gives you an idea of the flexibility in terms of responsive design, responsive design and, and layout. Uh, Bull Group is another company out of uh, Montreal. And uh, McGee Group, uh, based out of Atlanta, Georgia. So lots of information, and it, it's clear that e-commerce is critical to your business. Uh, and then the, the challenge then becomes, well, how do I do it? How, how do I get online? And most of you will have gone through IT projects, and they're daunting. I haven't run a number of them in past lives, other companies. They inevitably go over time, over budget, and they become a, a real distraction for, for, for staff. Um, and so the, the, the challenge is, one, you know you have to move to e-commerce. That really isn't the question. The, 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 the question is, how do I do this as painlessly as possible? How, how do I do this without disrupting my, uh, my current uh, staff my business uh, operations or providing a substandard experience to my customers. And we would get that a lot when we talk to clients. And so we developed a, a program called Fast Track. And Fast Track is designed to help you transform your Sage ERP system into a fully integrated e commerce website in 60 days. <clears throat> and how we do that, we have a five step process of what we work with. And it really has minimal impact uh, to you, the client. The first step is we do a planning session, and that is to make sure that we fully understand your business. No two businesses are alike, and so there are some key questions that need to be discussed in terms of design as one piece, the presentation layer, look and feel, but the underpinnings of e-commerce. You know, how do you do payments? Is it on account or do you use payment gateways? How do you handle shipping? Um, what um, what uh, what what uh, do you have certain terms? Uh, how do you handle tax? Do you ship internationally? Uh, what kind of products do you have, and how do you uh, how how are they structured? Um, pricing. And so we go through all that to make sure we fully understand um, your requirements and your needs and your business, and that becomes a blueprint for what we how we move forward. The second step is what we call connect, and that is connecting Commerce Build with your Stage ERP system. Uh, we do a two-hour session with you. Um, and you grant us access to your Sage 300X3 system. Uh, we connect Commerce Build to that. We do some testing to make sure price changes flow up to Commerce Build and to make sure that orders flow down into your Sage uh, ERP system. Uh, we focus on that connect piece because without that, um, it doesn't matter how great the site looks. Um, if it's not transacting and it's not integrated, then it's not gonna work. So we 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 focus on that. It's usually about a, a two-hour process to, to make that happen. Um, then we um, move into our third step, which is build, and that's building out the website. So we have a connected store that looks doesn't look like anything, but then we take um, everything and we take all your product information, your product images. We build it all out for you. So we basically build out the complete store for you. Uh, and get that all set up and done. Uh, get set up your shipping, your taxes, your payment, everything is done. Uh, and we we then take that and then we, we give that back to you 
uh, to do your user acceptance testing, which is step four test. And that's making sure it looks the way it's supposed to look, uh, making sure that uh, it's transacting the way it should, that all the connection points are done. Testing usually takes about three to four days um, uh, to make sure it's all looking. And we certainly recommend that um, you uh, uh, have other people in your business test it as well. And then we move into the fifth step, which is launch. And that is making sure that uh, you are launch ready. You set your go live date, there's some DNS work we've got to do to make sure that the old site is transferred to the new site from a domain perspective. If you have an old site, we set up the 301 redirects to make sure that any search engine optimization or SEO um, uh, work that was done on the old site is redirected to the new site so you don't lose anything in search rankings. And for a Sage 300 implementation, um, start to finish, it's around about 70 hours of our time to, to make that happen around about 20 to 25 hours of your time to make that happen. Uh, the plan, we spend a couple hours together. The connect, we spend a couple hours together. We do the build. You may have to get your content together, so there's a bit of time there. The testing is where you spend a, 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 few, a few hours and then lo getting launch ready. So it's very much taking the risk out of your day-to-day -day operations, and we take on the, the, the job of building out your, your commerce build solution. So what that means with fast track is you have a low risk to your business. There's minimal time and effort. As I said, there's about 20 to 25 hours of your time uh, involved in getting you from day one uh, to go live. And you achieve fast ROI for your investment because we get you online in 60 days. And, and what's important with, with the web is an e-commerce, it's, it's linear and it has no ending. So the day we go live is the beginning of your e-commerce experience. And, you can continually evolve and change and modify your online offering. And obviously we're there to help. Um, but our goal is that when we go live, you don't need Commerce Build anymore. You don't need to talk to us about uh, how do I do this? How do I do that? We're, we're happy to do it, obviously. But our, our focus is to make sure that you are set up for success, um, that you know how to manage your uh, uh, e-commerce experience, and you have complete control over the platform. So as we, as we wrap up, this overall um, commerce build, what's most uncritical is, is it's the intelligent replication of your business logic. It allows you to seamlessly extend all that business logic that you built in your Sage system to the digital world. And that comes out of the box. That is standard. Uh, that's why we're certified by Sage. And that's why we're the only e-commerce solution certified by, by Sage, because we're purpose-built for Sage. Uh, we only work with Sage, and, and so we're purpose-built. We know how Sage 300 and how Sage X3 work. Uh, we have X3 and 300 experts on staff uh, who are also e-commerce consultants who know how to integrate uh, the complexities. And certainly X3 is a lot more complex than 300 in terms of flexibility. <clears throat> so we work with you to make sure you're getting the maximum value of your Sage system when it comes to e-commerce. Uh, because of integration, we have real-time orders and payment integration with Sage. Uh, so we, because of that, we help you deliver a superior customer experience when it comes to e-commerce and comes to online. We help you drive incremental revenue, allowing you to do things like um, people who bought X also bought Y, uh, looking at ways to help structure your site to get the most value. So we provide guidance to you on how to best optimize your e-commerce solution. Uh, it's cost effective to maintain. Um, because it's a SaaS solution, there's no significant up, upfront fee uh, that you see with traditional solutions. And so you can quickly um, achieve fast ROI because we get you online in 60 days uh, because there's no significant upfront cost. There's, there's, there's a services fee, that, uh, there's a monthly uh, SaaS platform fee, typical SaaS pricing. Um, Another important factor is that seamless upgrades with your Sage ERP. So a lot of times we get questions from our clients, hey, I'm changing, I'm upgrading my Sage uh, Sage 300, Sage X3 system. <clears throat> what does that mean for Commerce Build? What does that mean for me? Uh, and the answer is not a whole lot. Uh, basically, it's a couple hours for us to switch, you upgrade to the new Sage, Sage system. Uh, we just disconnect we and reconnect. And so it's anywhere from an hour to two hours to do that. It's very straightforward. So because it's all in the cloud, seamless upgrades um, when, you when you upgrade your Sage ERP system. 
and we allow you to streamline business processes. We allow you to deliver a more um, efficient model, both for your staff and, and for your customers. And at the end of the day, as I mentioned, the three the three factors you need to be thinking about when looking at e-commerce: how does it drive incremental revenue? How does it improve my business processes, or op how does it improve my operating efficiency? And how do I drive better customer satisfaction? Those are the three questions you have to ask. Um, and the way you deal with each of those in a positive way is by having an e-commerce solution that fully integrates with your Sage system to take that business logic and extend that to the to the digital world. Uh, there's some information on the obligatory social media links and a blog. We have some cool, cool content on the blog for you to check out about some of the features and functionalities of Commerce Build. And uh, there's the information for IWI Consulting Group. Certainly, they'd be happy to answer any questions that they may have. Um, there's my contact info. Feel free to reach out to me directly. Um, uh, but I do appreciate your time. I think we've got a few minutes left for any questions. Um, but I appreciate your attention and hope you found the session uh, beneficial. I'll hand it back to you, Sean. Yeah, Stephen, thank you very much. Very informative. I um, do have a couple of questions here for you. Uh, first question is, uh, what do you see the biggest challenges is when a company is implementing an e-commerce solution? So, so what was that question? Uh, what are the biggest challenges when a company is implementing an e-commerce solution? Like, yeah, so I think that's a good question. I think <clears throat> what we see is, um, so I'll, 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 I'll look at it from a commerce bill perspective. Um, w one of the biggest challenges we see is a, a client not knowing what they want. Uh, and so when it comes to design, not, not knowing what they want. And so we can burn a lot of cycles on, on design um, or, uh, or, or sort of what we call boiling the ocean, trying to be, try and do everything at one go. And what we say to our clients is, look, um, when you go live, that's the beginning of that's the beginning of the online experience. And so, the focus needs to be let's keep the focus narrow, let's get you online, and then we can add things as we go along. And you, the, the beauty of the web, uh, Sean, is you can test ideas and test concepts. Um, but what we see with in general is is trying to do too much. Uh, too soon, and that inevitably uh, delays um, projects and uh, causes things to take much longer than they have. So that's why at Commerce Bill we have this plan session to clearly understand what you're looking to achieve, so that we can um, effectively deliver that within the 60 day 60 day time frame. Okay, we have another question here. Somebody wanted to know, um, you know, just the benefits of going with like a cloud SaaS type solution uh, uh, over traditional on-premise. Yeah, so you know, software as a service, it's been around for a while, um, but a, a lot of software is still um, yeah, traditional in terms of an on-prem. You you have to install it on site. Um, as opposed to uh, everything being the cloud, and and I think a few years ago, Sean, there was a little bit of consternation about the cloud, and you know, is it safe? Is it secure? The reality is, uh, I think we've well established, you know, for the most part, it is safe, it is secure, uh, and it's pretty much how most software is handled today. But why is SaaS better than on-prem? Well, one from the Commerce Bowl perspective is we're constantly investing in the platform. So every two weeks, we release we we release new features onto the platform. Uh, new new features, new functionality, uh, and that doesn't mean uh, that doesn't impact our customers at all in terms of uh, they just access them when they're available. There's no need for them to reinstall to get the newest features. There's no need to do upgrades. Um, certainly, we do migrations to new to, to new versions, um, but there's no need for them to upgrade to uh, benefit from new features. Um, you also have access to enterprise quality. Um, uh, technology. So, as I'd mentioned earlier, we're we're hosted in Google Cloud. So we, Commerce Bill, benefit from all that Google Cloud can offer, and subsequently, our clients, our customers, benefit from from the latest in Google technology. Uh, and as I in the, one of the last few slides, because we're a cloud, you can seamlessly upgrade to new versions of Sage. And that's a common question: uh, as you upgrade to a new version of Sage. Um, there's no, it's a, it's a couple hours, that's it, for us to, to reconnect your store to your new version of Sage. <clears throat> and most importantly, from a, an accounting perspective, there's no hardware costs. There's no CapEx costs. So you don't have any outlay of upfront cash 
um, when you using a, a SaaS solution like uh, Commerce Build. All right, thank you. And uh, speaking of, of, of cost, there is uh, one more question here. Just uh, the pricing model. Like, could you explain that a little bit? Yeah, so our pricing model is a traditional SaaS model. Is There's two components. There's a service piece, and then there's a platform or a SaaS pricing. So Sage 300, um, uh, typical implementation, uh, 60 days. Uh, we're looking at uh, around uh, uh Fifteen thousand uh, dollars to get you from from nothing to to go live with a fully integrated e-commerce solution. That's a <clears throat> that's a fixed fee uh, price. And what we do there, uh, Sean, is uh, we we scope out properly to make sure that we can everything looks good. Um, so it's fifteen thousand dollars to get you from um, from uh, not nothing to a fully integrated e-commerce solution. And then for Sage three hundred, uh, the base. Um, uh, uh, base package, uh, it's $1,000 a month for um, the SaaS platform fee, which gets you all the benefits of being on a SaaS solution. And as we roll out new features, you automatically uh, get those. All right, perfect. Thank you very much. Um, so, Stephen, I'd very much uh, like to thank you for your time uh, and showing this uh, commerce platform. Um, and everybody that attended, I appreciate your time. I know it's valuable, so uh, we are at the top of the hour, so I'll let everybody get back to the day, and, and thanks once again. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to uh, IWI. Okay, have a great day. Bye now. Thank you.